everyone. Welcome to this day. It is Saturday, September 26th. We have no meetings to report today, but I will tell you who's on our show. We have Supervisor Lisa Bartlett, who is accompanied by Neil Kelly, who is in charge of the Registrar of Voters. And so we're going to talk a lot about the upcoming voting that we have. And we also have a library update with Eileen. And she's going to tell us a little bit about how you can rent out videos and DVDs as well as a variety of different things. So with that, we will go ahead and talk to you a little bit about our weather. Now, oh, well, we're going to give you our resources first. Our resources for COVID-19 or COVID-19.ca.gov, and that's where you can get all of the governor's reopening plans. OCHealthInfo.com is where you can get all the numbers for COVID. And if you would like to call, they have a hotline, 714-834-2000. And you could always go to our website, which is lagunawoodsvillagealerts.com, and you can email us at info at lagunawoodsvillage.com. Okay, now we'll go ahead and give you the weather. A uh, couple of days of very nice weather. We're looking today, 8063, tomorrow 8364, and then we are starting a warming trend on Monday, approximately 8867. And if you are traveling, your beaches are looking quite nice. We've got temperatures down there looking really nice, like in the high 70s, seven, well, mid-70s, 7461. Mammoth is 7534. Big Bear, 7642. And then Palm Springs is still going to be in the triple digits, 10374. Now, our sunrise this morning was 642, and the sunset will be at 641. So really odd times there. I don't think we're quite used to it. We are supposed to be going to a daylight savings beginning in November. All right, our photo was sent to us by Mark Rabinowich. Thank you so much, Mark. We really like the fact that you are able to send us some really great shots. And if you have a photo that you would like to share with us, please email it to lagunawoodsvillagetv at gmail.com. All right, stay tuned, and we'll be right back with Lisa Bartlett and Neil Kelly. joined by Supervisor Lisa Bartlett. And then also we have Neil Kelly here. Neil, thank you for being with us. And Lisa, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Now, Lisa is going to start, but towards uh, the end or middle, we're going to have Neil talk to us about the voting that's coming up. And uh, he's going to tell us all about the mail-in ballots, deadlines, and, and how you go about doing all of that. So for starters, we'll have Lisa. Thank you for joining me and uh, feel free to go ahead. Always great to be back. Um, so we have a new program called the Nutrition Gap Program. And it's designed to fill those gaps um, due to COVID-19 because there are a lot of folks who just don't want to get out to the store um, and leave their homes. They, they want to be in a safe environment relative to meals. And so we've got some funding through the CARES Act and it's a million dollars per district. It runs through December 31st. So the eligible population are persons who are 55 and older, which includes just about everybody there in Laguna Woods, um, persons with disabilities, regardless of age, military veterans, uh, regardless of age as well. And the applicants cannot be currently receiving other nutrition programs. So if they are already a member of CalFresh or the Great Plates Delivery Program or Home Delivered or Congregate Meals, they would not be eligible for this new program. So the program is administered by 211 Orange County in collaboration with Second Harvest Food Bank and Ruby's Diner. And the participants are going to be provided with food boxes that contains two weeks worth of groceries 
and fresh produce and 12 frozen meals from Ruby's Diner will accompany each food box. It'll be de delivered directly to every person's residence. So right to your doorstep, very convenient. You don't have to leave your home. Delivery schedule will be flexible to work with each participant's uh, time frame. And I really wanna thank Ruby Steiner and Second Harvest Food Bank for stepping up to help us with this really significant program during these challenging times of COVID. So to inquire and get more information about the Nutrition Gap program, we request that you contact 211OC at 949-646-4357. That's 949-646-4357. And you can also go to the website, which is www.211oc.org. And our Office on Aging can also provide any assistance and additional information. Um, that would be the Area Agency on Aging at occr.ocgov.com. Might be easier to call the local number, which is 714-480-6450. Uh, that, that's really nice of uh, both the food bank and Ruby's and that's so great they can provide them with frozen dinners yes. or, or food or whatever it might be. Do you have any idea what it would be? It's a combination of fresh um, produce and food products and also frozen dinners. So the dinners are supplied by Ruby's? Yes. Man, that's great. That is really nice. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about, you know, COVID-19. I know we've, we've really been pretty good about keeping everybody up to date on where we're at in terms of, you know, the level and things like that, but uh, you've got some additional things. Yes, so COVID-19 has really presented many challenges throughout all of our county departments. And when we have to think about our county operations, we really had to rethink about how the county operates, especially when it comes to things like the upcoming election. So joining me today, really pleased to have one of my favorite county employees, one of our department heads, Neil Kelly, who's our registrar of voters. And he will share with us the um, indications of what we need to do differently relative to voting in this election cycle because we've gone to new equipment, we've gone to vote centers, and we've got some really great protocols in place not only to further safeguard our elections, but we've got a lot of enhancements and more convenience for people who want to vote um, at, at going to different locations relative to not having just to vote down the street from the residents, but being able to go to a vote center or a vote drop box. So I'm going to um, have Neil Kelly walk us through all of the specifics for this election. So important to have everybody cast their vote on election day. Exactly. Welcome, Neil. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Thank you, Supervisor, for the introduction. Uh, it's great to be here. I always enjoy being on the show and speaking directly to the Laguna Woods residents. And there is, as the Supervisor pointed out, some important changes. Uh, but the first is, just reminding everybody from March, we sent a mail ballot to every voter in, in Orange County. And the same thing will have, be happening for the November election. So those ballots are going to start going out on, on October the 5th and vo voters should receive those within a day or so of the 5th. Before that though, we're gonna be sending out voter guides. And these voter guides are your county practice ballot as well as information about voting. And those are gonna start going out on Thursday of this week um, on the 24th. And so voters should see those in a, in a few days as well. You know, presidential elections uh, in and of themselves are exciting and busy, but add COVID-19 on top of that, and we have a whole new dynamic in front of us for voting. And we spent the last six months preparing a very robust plan for ensuring voter safety as well as our employee safety in uh, vote centers throughout the county. So voters that choose to go vote in person, as the supervisor pointed out, there'll be 170 locations throughout Orange County. You can vote at any one of them, which is great. And our new system, uh, we had a fantastic launch in March and we're deploying that again for November. So just a couple of other quick points and then hopefully get some questions. Uh, the Dropbox is going to be at Laguna Woods City Hall for uh, residents again, which is great. Thank you to the city. And then we'll have our vote center there at Laguna Woods City Hall as well. When voters walk in, you're going to have hand sanitizer, you're going to have greeters with uh, full PPE on, a lot of safety protocols in place, and I really want you to feel comfortable casting your ballot, and that's what we've done 
uh, all the way down to disposable pens for your ballot uh, instead of reusable pens. So lots of exciting things coming ahead. There's a lot of national attention on mail balloting and voting in general, and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. You know, and that's, that's nice that you point that out because obviously there was a big to-do about the post office. And I know there's been some debate about all of that. Maybe you can help shed some light about if I put my ballot in that box, is it gonna get there? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we work very closely with our postal officials here in Orange County, and I work closely with DC officials as well. And you know, obviously there's a lot of white noise around an election, which is difficult sometimes to sift through, but I can tell you at the local level, we're hearing very positive things from the post office. Uh, I'm getting quite a few reassurances on our delivery schedule. And more importantly, we at, at the office look at the data on an hourly basis with the post office. So I can see if I've got delays in certain zip codes or I've got issues on the return ballot. So I would encourage people if they're comfortable still using that mail system, absolutely put it in the mailbox, postage paid, it'll get back to us. But I do want to point out those drop boxes, that's a direct line to my office which means if you put that in a secure Dropbox, we pick those up daily. I have radio dispatch teams that are out there doing that. And you can even go online and track your ballot from the Dropbox all the way to the counting station. So uh, either way, you've got lots of options. That's great. Now, what if somebody wants to go in person and they want it? Do you anticipate a lot of long lines? You know, I mean, if you look at March, we in the primary had eight out of 10 voters using a ballot they received through the mail. So I don't think there's going to be any reason we're not going to see those same kind of numbers for November. We might even see nine out of 10 voters using a ballot through the mail. Just anecdotally from phone calls right now we're receiving and information online, I think a lot of people are going to take that ballot they receive and vote at home because they have lots of options when they vote at home. They can vote on their coffee table and then they have lots of, lots of options to return it. Right. But I don't want to discount the, the fact that some folks want to go in person, and we, and we understand that. And so they can go, like I said, to any of the 170 vote centers. They don't have to bring their ballot with them. They can show up. We can check them in electronically and process them on the spot. Now, let's say uh, people have questions regarding um, everything that you just mentioned. Uh, where should they go? So real simple, uh, there's two real easy ways to do this. One is pick up your phone. Give us a call. I have operators answering. We, you, we don't put you through a recording. Uh, so you'll go right to an operator at 714-567-7600. Or if you're a little more technically uh, adept, then go online and you can chat with one of our operators live at ocvote.com forward slash chat. And then finally, uh, if you just want to go online and poke around and, and look at the information on our website, ocvote.com. Excellent. Lisa, do you have any questions for Neil that you'd like to share with our audience? No questions. I just I want to thank Neil for really um, pushing the county to get some updated equipment, um, get some new procedures in place, and to provide that level of security that we're all looking for during the voting process and the convenience. People can vote at their residence. They can vote at a vote center throughout the county, not just near their home where they work. So it really opens up a lot of the possibilities to not only vote um, around the county at a different location other than your residence, but um, the fact that it's safeguarded to a great extent. Um, the software we have in place is state-of-the-art software, new equipment, disposable pens. So we're safeguarding the process in so many ways. And I wanna thank Neil Kelly and his staff for really putting all of these great things in place for us. And if I could just add, under Supervisor uh, Bartlett's leadership is where we've been in, in terms of moving the county forward through innovation. So I just want to say thank you to her as well. All right. Well, I love it. Well, you both work very well together. So this is awesome. So Lisa, I understand that you're going to be having a virtual South County Emergency Preparedness Summit. Yes, that will begin on September the 30th. And it'll air twice daily, 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. You can also view it on my Facebook page and YouTube channel as well. So are those gonna be live streamed on your Facebook page and YouTube channel or would those be a recording? Those would be recordings. Okay, perfect. So they will be available obviously after the times that you mentioned. Yes. So thank you both for uh, being with us. I appreciate it. And Lisa, do you have any last few things you'd like to mention? Just want to have everyone stay tuned for September 29th could be a very big day for the county. As you know, we've been progressing through the various tiers at the state for reopening our economy. Fingers crossed, we're gonna be able to go from the red tier to the orange tier on September 29th, which means most of our 
um, businesses and business sectors are going to be able to reopen to a greater extent. People can get back into the office. We've got schools open. So this is a, a big day for Orange County to be moving hopefully to the orange tier on September the 29th, but we'll be, we'll be making an announcement through the county and just want to keep everyone as a reminder to uh, wash your hands frequently, use your hand sanitizer and social distancing six feet apart when you're in public and be sure to wear your face covering to keep yourself safe and those around you safe. Great. Well, thank you both for being with us. I appreciate it. Thank you. And we'll be right back after this. It was just a get together with friends. No big deal. Everybody felt fine. Now I'm super sick. Everyone is sick. I just wish we had been more careful. It would have been easier than this. So wear a mask. Do what you can outside. Stay six feet apart. Because some things you just can't take back. Do your part to lower the risk. Welcome back. Today I am joined by Eileen Ordway, who is here on behalf of the Laguna Woods Library. Well, Eileen, so nice to meet you. How are you? It's nice to meet you too, Lisa. I've been watching you every day. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Hopefully you're learning something new every day. <laughs> well, gosh, well, we've been talking about the library and how people can check things out even though you're technically closed. But as you say, you know, we haven't really closed all the way. So what do you mean by that? Well, like the Orange County uh, libraries, they all totally shut down. But right from the very beginning, on March 16th, when we were told we couldn't have anyone in the library anymore, a lot of us who are avid readers started thinking, oh my gosh, our poor patrons won't have anything to read. So we started off by putting a cabinet out on the patio outside our front door, and we put in uh, jigsaw puzzles, paperbacks, uh, DVDs that had been donated and weren't in our uh, catalog. And people started taking advantage of it right away. And then that very weekend, the weekend of March, I think 18th, uh, we started contacting the people who, anyone we had our uh, an email for who had checked out things like in the last year. Mm -hmm. And we asked them if they'd be interested in reserving items. And then we'd have uh, what we call like front door pickup. And so people go online or they email and we reserve items for them. And then uh, they get, we have one or two people in the library every day for maybe two hours. They pull items from the shelves. They get a, a wrapper, let me show my prop here, that has uh, the person's name on it. Oh. And we put them on a cart. And then that we are open three days a week for two hours, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, from 11 to one. Mm -hmm. People, we, we email prior to that to let them know the item's ready for pickup. Okay. That day, we check it out to them. So when they come to the library to pick up their item, they find their name on the cart, they show their Laguna Woods ID to the person behind the door, and off they go, no human contact. And it's been working really well. We've checked out well over 4,000 items to almost 500 people. Uh, oh, in the most. Yeah, yeah. Good for you. That's great. What, what, what brought you? I mean, how did you get all these great ideas? Well, to me, the biggest thing was I would, if I didn't have access to books, I would panic. My earthquake bag has a half a dozen books in it. So I, I could feel I was empathizing with people that, we normally have 120 to 130 people come into the library every day when it's normally. Yeah. So we just kept imagining these poor people trapped with no, nothing to do. So, uh, so oh yeah, we gosh. went into action. <laughs> I think that is awesome. I mean, that really is appreciated, I'm sure, by everyone. And, and like you said, you know, if they're not big on their phones, where maybe they do Audible or something like that, and they like right. to have the feel of that book, what are they going to do? Yes. Yeah. A lot of people don't have Kindles or whatever, right? That's so. great. Good job. That is awesome that you were able to pull that together. Now, you do have some new things that you wanted to share with everybody. Tell me about some of those. We do. We continue to put things into our catalog just as we do every month. So we have um, DVDs. 
we're having a hard time getting some of the new movies because they're staying on the streaming services longer. But we've gotten quite a few new uh, TV series, and people do like to, uh, they're binge watching their TV series during this. So we've got um, two just in the last uh, two weeks, two from Masterpiece Theater, one's uh, called Baptiste about a French detective and a World War II, uh, World on Fire, which is a World War II uh, drama, a British drama. We have two American TV shows, The Sinner, which is a crime anthology with Bill Pullman. And we now have two uh, seasons of Yellowstone, which is starring Kevin Costner. Mm -hmm. uh, and one from uh, Acorn TV called Deadwood or Fell, which is a Scottish murder mystery. Oh, that's not, I just started watching Yellowstone two days ago. Okay. I'm, I'm only, I'm not through the first, first season, but wow, it's great. I, you watched I, it? I know, but I've heard it's pretty brutal. Yeah. yeah no, it, it is brutal, but you know what? It seems like everything's got something kind of behind the scenes there of, of that kind of, of thing, but, right. but I kind of like the Western part of it, you know, it makes me want to move to Montana. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, have you seen any of these other things, The Sinner or Deadwater Fell? I have not. I'm not a big DVD watcher. If I have the opportunity, I'm going to re be reading my books. So, uh, just reading. Okay. <laughs> not so much. Now, do you, do you just I'm read? I'm a news junkie, too. Pardon me? I'm a news junkie. Watch too much news on TV. Oh, yeah. We need to stop doing that. <laughs> I know. I, I, think, know. I think reading would be better because it takes us far, far away. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and then you have some new books. Yeah, we have... Um, um, Nonfiction, we have the new book by Al Roker, uh, Marlo Thomas, and Alex Trebek. Oh, and we've yeah. added 36 new fiction books in the last two months. We have Dan Silva's new book, The Order. We just this weekend put in Stuart Wood's new book, Choppy Water. And we have a new one by Jonathan Kellerman, Danielle Steele, and everybody loves James Patterson. So we have his new one too. Yeah. Wow. That's great. Gosh, you're, you are a pretty advanced library. I had no idea. Oh that's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I know a lot of people think we're just, Oh, this is the place where people dump their donations and their ancient history. And now we're, we're good. <laughs> Our ancient history. Aliens. <laughs> <laughs> so what, uh, since you're an avid reader, what are, what are, what are some of the genres that you like? Well, I, I like uh, murder mysteries, uh, David Baldacci and uh, Dan Silva, John Sanford. And I also like um, romances. Nora Roberts is my favorite. Sure. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm actually rereading all of hers now. I brought them with me when we moved from Pennsylvania. So I'm oh, wow. Now, I noticed there was a new book club that is that has formed. And um, are, are you involved in book clubs as well? I am not. Um, it, it took me a long time to get my college degrees. And it, to me, having to read on a schedule is like doing homework. And I just can't do it. But but we have three uh, three book clubs. Uh, Donna Dahl um, manages those. And they're still continuing using Zoom. Yeah. So, uh, every, yeah, we have a lot of people who really enjoy it. <laughs> Oh, well, that's great. I'm so glad that you've been staying busy and you've been reading and you've been stopping yourself from watching the news <laughs> what <it> was days, <laughs> right <laughs> yes. that is great well i appreciate the information thank you so much and right. i'm sure all the residents just totally appreciate all the work you've done we've gotten a lot of good feedback and we really appreciate it but oh. yeah it is keeping us busy so we enjoy that too <laughs> that's awesome well thank you so much and uh you know i don't know how much longer we're going to be doing this but keep it up okay thank you so much i really appreciate it the, the opportunity to, to let everybody know we're still working. <laughs> I love it, Eileen. Thank you again. Thank you. All right. And we'll be right back after this. At Harvard Eye, we're so happy to be open again to see you for all your medical and surgical eye care. We're taking great care to protect everyone from COVID-19 by seeing fewer patients spacing out chairs in our lobby, sanitizing our office constantly, and doing much more. The world is changing a lot, but what hasn't changed is we're honored by your trust and confidence and committed to keeping you safe. We can't wait to see you. This crisis has changed almost everything, but not our resolve. We've pulled together, worked hard to keep each other safe. 
We flatten the curve and are starting to reopen our communities. We can protect the people we love and help Californians get back on their feet. For our families and our communities, let's stay the course and stop the spread. Today is The Tall Men, and it has Clark Gable in it. And it is about Ben and Clint Allison. They've been hired to lead a herd of cattle from Texas to Montana. And before long, they see a tribe of Native Americans raiding a small pioneer village. The brothers have the spirited Nella Turner, and romantic sparks immediately fly between Nella and Ben. However, Nella's desire for wealth puts a damper on their burgeoning relationship. Meanwhile, the cattle drivers must make one last trip through unwelcoming native territories. And that will be shown at 3 and 6 p.m. And that is brought to you by Irvine Clinical Research. So that'll be a fun little Saturday movie. All right, a couple of other things. I wanted to uh, give you the court times again for the tennis, pickleball, and paddleball. And those are uh, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. So they have expanded those hours, so they're all day into the evening. You must have an online or phone reservation. So please go to lagunawoodsvillage.com uh, and you would go to recreation. Or you can call 949-268-2481. Now, getting around town can be challenging, so I wanted to let you know about the Laguna Woods uh, City of Laguna Woods has a senior mobility program, and so there's a variety of different things that you can do on here. You can get taxi vouchers, they call them taxi bucks. You get non-emergency medical transportation, and you also can get a ride to the Irvine train station. If you want to do that, you would go to resident services at 949-597-4600 or email them at residentservices at msninc.org. And one last thing real quick, as I just wanted to remind you to register to vote. So your, your uh, deadline to be able to do that online is October 19th. So do try to get uh, that going as soon as you can. Okay, let's take a, one last look at our quick weather here. We've got uh, some nice temperatures. Uh, looking pretty good today, 80-63, tomorrow 83-64. But then by Monday we are starting a warming trend and it's looking kind of hot. So we'll keep an eye on that, 88-67 for Monday. And then if you are traveling around town, Beaches look nice in the mid-70s. If you're going to Mammoth, same thing. Big Bear, same thing. Looks pretty good. But Palm Springs, triple digits, 103. Have a great rest of your weekend. See us again on Monday at 9 a.m. Stay healthy and have a good weekend. Bye-bye.